In this RH Jam, we'll examine how healing might be activated daily in each of us and how at Reconnective Healing facilitates this. Our Reconnective Healing mentor and practitioner, John Agrignon, will join us to share his discoveries and guide us through simple awareness exercises. We'll also share with you an exclusive clip from our upcoming energy interaction with Eric and Jillian this Saturday, guys. All of this coming up right now on the RH Jam. All right, and welcome back. And my name is Anna Clavel. I am your presenter here at the RH Gem. And if this is the first time you've joined us, the RH Gem is a weekly program that we try to do it live, about 30 minutes or so. Sometimes we go over and uh, we tackle anything and everything that has to do with reconnective healing. And we also love to tackle topics that are important to you. So you just please keep sending us your suggestions, comments, and questions because they inspire what the program is going to be about. And let's say hello to our chat members. Welcome, Lexi. Welcome, Kirsten and Rigo. Enrico, hello. Hello, Silka and Soren. Welcome, you all. Guys, uh, I'm counting on you to leave your comments and put your questions in there. They're so important, seriously. And John, John told me he is ready. He's ready to rumble over any question that you have about activating healing in our daily lives. And that's the topic we're going to jump up to right now. Of course, after that, use that super clever little R thing that turns around. So guys, how do we activate healing in our daily lives? So when we think about healing, and I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to try and do a comparative here, really short and, and sweet, you know? Yes, to all of us who are in the Reconnective Healing family, we already have an understanding that healing is much more than uh, the physical, the mental, the spiritual, the emotional. And it's definitely not a fixing, it's not what our mentality is, our mindset is about curing and fixing things. It is much more than that. And yet sometimes we forget that when we are in the Reconnective Healing frequencies, we just are. Look at this lady. I love this picture. She is. She's activated, you know. She is. Imagine that that beautiful plume that she has. Like, actually, let's make it bigger. Let's make it bigger, you know. That that beautiful plume of, of uh, smoke that she has in her hands, that, that is you. That is your biophotonic energy field just expanding and communicating laser-like with the entire field and beyond into the multiverse. There is nothing in this lady that separates her from the healing and the frequencies that she truly is. So guys, my question is, how sometimes do we feel distant from knowing that this is happening constantly and in our daily lives? And perhaps it's because even when we know, we know and we have experienced and we have witnessed the, the miracles, the impossible, right? Don't we sometimes still feel a little bit like we gotta fix something? Okay, guys, I know this might be like a little uh, low blow here because this is very topical. Yes, it's a very topical image, but really this is a little bit where we are. Sometimes, you know, fear may put us right back into that seat of expectation and fixing things and then we stop being the observer and the witness to the transformation that is happening in our lives constantly, thanks to the reconnective healing frequencies. So moving past these expectations, you know, it's uh, in a moment of crisis. Oh, so Gabriel Marci Garcia Marquez would say, love in the times of color. We could say love in the time of uh, Corona. Uh, how, how does that happen? You know, we can, we know these things, and this is the, this is the thing that it's so important to, for us to perhaps take a moment to observe. We know these things. We know it. We know it on a molecular level. We know it perhaps also in an intellectual level. And uh, what are the things that then that we know we are it and it is us that just keeps us in a loop that perhaps we stop seeing and re recognizing the, uh, that there is no distance between this healing and ourselves, this transformation and ourselves, right? So maybe we fall into a sense of perhaps disappointment. Disappointment when, 
you know, even when we think we're not expecting something to happen, maybe we still are a little, or maybe we are feeling very much emotionally uh, uh, attached to a result because it's somebody we care about a lot. Uh, these are some of the things that perhaps get, perhaps get in, in our daily lives experience of those frequencies and how just by the fact that we are aware of them, how that actually is constantly transforming us, constantly bringing this healing into every level of who we are, is how do we actually pay attention to them? Now, it may be that with our busy, busy lives and the amount of, uh, you know, daily stress that so many of us uh, are undergoing and undergo, maybe we have started to relegate our interaction with the frequencies to a special moment. You know, I'm going to take a special moment and this is the moment in which I will take a, a, say, a couple of minutes and then I'm going to start feeling it. I am going to climb to that mountain and I'm going to get myself a latte and I will just look at the sunset and listen to some great music and then I'm going to play with the frequencies. And you know what? That is awesome. I, yeah, that is awesome that you do, do take a moment and, and you uh, do all of this. But do you need to plan it? Do, 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 do we then go into the whole routine in which it needs to be a planned thing? Because we're really good at getting into routines, guys. Human beings tend to fall into routines and rituals like, like that. Like anything that becomes like a pattern, our brains lap it up. They love that. So this is something that we're going to talk about because where should we connect a healing being in your life? Should it be like the special plan moment? Should it be then, uh, does it become an afterthought that you uh, go to in case things just get really out of kilter and then that's the last thing that comes to your mind uh, or comes to you because you have put it in the background? Or maybe are we just simply like this beautiful lady again that I want to show you, can we just be it, you know? Well, John Agnon is going to be joining us shortly to talk about all of this and guide us through a lovely little interaction with them. But first... I want to share with you a beautiful, a beautiful workshop with children that took place a couple of weeks ago in uh, Medellin, Colombia. Because this is something, guys, that could happen anywhere else. And maybe this will inspire some of you to approach us so we can do it together. Here you go, guys. I hope you like. All right, guys, and if you're very intrigued about that beautiful workshop with children, let me tell you, we can do many more of these. If this is something that is your passion to work with children or to help set up a presentation like this one, this very beautiful all day workshop that Monica and uh, Mar uh, Marcella did in Colombia. Let us know, contact us, leave us a message here, let Lexi know, let Cecilia know. And by the way, welcome Lexi, welcome Cecilia. Cecilia Sams is with us here in the room as well. And uh, let us know because it is our joy to be able to bring reconnective healing to everyone at every age and ev at every walk of life. So let us know, okay? Any questions? I hear that maybe somebody has a question here about uh, why, let me see, Silka. 
Silka, why do you think it stops us? Mm, let me see, moving past expectations. You know, why do you think it stops us? Um, moving past expectations, I'm not sure. Let me see, dear. I'm not sure I'm seeing the uh, first part to the question. So let us know. Please put it back here because we're definitely going to answer that question. It is important. What are the things that stops us? And uh, we are going to be exploring that right here, right now with John, who's going to join us right now, guys. Exciting. Hello, John. How are you? All right. I just I want to share something right away that I saw this morning on my morning walk. Huh? I saw a sign that said, don't trust atoms. They make up everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's excellent. And so true. They do make right. up everything. Uh, John, welcome to the RH Jam. And uh, oh. this is something that to me personally is such an important topic um, as a practitioner. And as somebody who just facilitates reconnective healing and it, it loves to be in the frequencies constantly, I, I, I am in the awareness of them. Um, I recognize that there are moments in which we can perhaps lose that connection or lose that uh, uh, ability to uh, maybe transcend the moment and allow for the frequencies to be there for us. Can I, can I ask you, what may have been ways um in which you may have found yourself that you wanted to affect healing before reconnective healing came into your life you know because well, I mean, maybe that what i'm thinking is that maybe there's some remnants in in the lives of all of us and maybe in your experience you can share something that we can do our self-discovery well if you're asking sort of what i did before i did reconnective healing i actually was in the field of healing i did massage therapy and uh when I was doing massage therapy, it was quite technique-based as opposed to non-technique-based with reconnective healing. And um, uh, it was sort of a bit frustrating for me. For one thing, it seemed to be ongoing. There was seemed to be no real healing going on. It was just a matter of doing treatment after treatment after treatment with a lot of people, which is okay. It helped them, you know. But it was a bit frustrating because there seemed to be no end to it. And also... Um, I was really frustrated because I could see that besides the physical level that I was working on, that there was a lot of people were especially holding on the psychological level and their tissue would reflect that and they couldn't let go of a lot of things. So that's why they were coming for session after session with me. And um, um, it was kind of like, I, I really wished, I really wanted to have some healing going where, where they're whatever that was bothering them would quit bothering them for a while, you know, but it was, it, I couldn't reach all those levels that I wanted to with, uh, with the, you know, the four dimensional healing I was using at that time. And, and it helped, you know, and it really does help people. It makes them feel good. But some, sometimes you, you know, I just, I wanted to do a lot more. So in the, in your uh, quest to doing a lot more, and you yeah. discover reconnective healing. Tell me about expectations, because as a massage therapist, uh, my I, my assumption is that if you massage in a certain way, you're expecting a muscle to relax in a certain way, which in, in, then would bring up a certain effect. But with reconnective yeah. healing, expectations actually interrupt the flow of these frequencies. So how how did you... And this is a question that is actually coming as well in our chat uh, board here in our chat room. How did you, um, how, how, what was your relationship with expectation after really connective healing came into your life? Well, uh, it was, it was like exercising a new muscle, definitely, where I had to let go of my expectations and, um, and in, in letting go of my expectations, um, uh, anything was possible in terms of, of, of the healing process with people and, and anything would arrive, you know, people might come in with an expectation at, for reconnective healing to be psychological and, and they would have a physical healing and, um, and might come in with physical expectations and have a psychological healing, which, which sort of the, the healings just seem to come as the person really needs them. It seems to be really effective because it, a lot of times when you're doing, you know, four-dimensional healing, 
like massage therapy, you're just working on one area, you're focused on one area, and it may not be where that where everything's coming from. You might be working on the knee, but the problem is in the ankle or in their head or or in in their digestive system. You know that it can be anywhere. And uh, reconnective healing, if you can let go of your expectations as to what what what's coming, uh, anything can come, absolutely anything. You're open to the infinite healing possibilities of the universe. It's quite phenomenal. The, uh, yes. And, uh, you know, um, do you feel in the, uh, as you've, as you've evolved in the reconnective healing frequencies, uh, how they, how in, in those first years, uh, between you understanding and starting to exercise this new muscle. I love how you call that the new muscle, right? Yeah. How, where, are, where were the pitfalls that perhaps you discover in yourself that perhaps puts you back in a mindset of expectation and fears? Sorry, what was that question? In those first years, as you started to become a practitioner with reconnective healing, right. Yeah, where were moments in which you perhaps experienced some pitfalls that perhaps took you back into expectations or even fear? Well, I, I think um, it's kind of like going to the gym. You know, you got to keep going to keep healthy. You know, and uh, um, with 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 the thing of expectation was I, I actually I used to have quite a few setbacks all the time. Even even in my personal life, I would buy into my own fears and. And feel sort of cut off from the frequencies and as soon as i acknowledged what i was feeling i would i would feel much better and um there was uh you know sometimes your practice gets a little bit slow and you think it's your fault and you get into fear mode and uh and you just gotta like let go of any expectations and keep keep working on that and now that's part of my mantra my mantra is is receive and have no expectations and all the time when i'm doing reconnective feeling i'm running that mantra um And I just keep reminding myself of that, you know, and uh, um, and it can happen several times in a session where I'm going back to that mantra in my mind and going receive, have no expectations. And uh, um, and that's so that's become my my mantra of work. <laughs> I think that's a mantra that I don't know, guys here in the chat. Uh, how do you feel about that? Is it something that I think I personally think that's really applicable? Because it's sometimes that, you know, our mind starts running and it starts creating a scenario. So receive yeah. and have no expectations. It's a beautiful yeah. way to remind yeah. ourselves of that there's so much more, so much more. So when we talked about activating reconnective healing in our daily life, which is part of a core teachings that you are uh, with your uh, Living in the Frequencies team uh, sharing with the students, tell me a little bit about that. Well, it's interesting you were talking about um, about uh, your mind running, you know, and that's usually a sign to me that, that there's a little scent, a feeling you've ignored or blocked or something like that. And so in that moment, just acknowledge your own feelings and usually your mind will just stop like that. And then you'll be open to whatever is coming again. That'll take you into that state of openness of no expectation. Um And so that that's a huge clue that, that you're, you just block a little feeling as a practitioner, you know, and uh, I, I get that sometimes. The feeling will come up and I won't acknowledge it. And then I, my mind starts to race a bit. And the beautiful thing about reconnective healing is you just sort of acknowledge that you've, you know, you've been a bit you're spaced out there a minute and just gently bring yourself back to the to the healing process. And um, and then you by doing that, you're sort of creating a field of love around yourself and a, a field of love with the universe and uh, and, th and then that opens up again and you can let go of your expectations so the the uh the allowing your mind to run is a little bit like what uh, eric and julian do say it's like if, if your mind gets in the way don't try to stop it because it's like yeah. it, you yeah. know say there's no no pink elephant you know i love that story by eric the pink elephant in the room you know with a pizza yeah. box You know, <laughs> once that gets into your head, it's difficult to get rid of it, right, guys? Yeah. And if you have a story to share in the chat, please put it in there because some of these things get in our heads and they're, they're so difficult to get out. They're called memes. There's no surprise that we use memes now as those little images that we use in Instagram and whatnot. But originally a meme is actually a virus of the mind. It's something that you can be, can get planted in your mind and it's really difficult to get rid of. Uh, so uh, when we chatted about this, you, you know, there was this whole moment if I went, oh, yay. 
uh, that you may have something to guide us through, perhaps a meditation or interaction with the frequencies to help us be there, be uh, be able to uh, not uh, to sidestep that mindset or allow it to come in, but observe it and let it go. So yeah. let me give you like let me give you the floor. Sorry, I was just going to say a helpful tool for that is just to focus back on your hands, a little tiny spot in your hand, and notice what you're seeing and notice what you're noticing, and just receive, just start receiving again, just gently, quietly, a little tiny spot in your hand. And that seems to take me out of my mind again, back into my body and back into being there for the, for the person on the table. I love that. Would you like to do like uh, perhaps with all like a, a little enactment of that so we can follow you just uh, get well, into like exchange. Sounds like guided thing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Okay. Well, this is something uh, we didn't talk about, about this yet uh, as far as a whole day thing, but um You can do this in the morning when you get up. Um, we like to call these things bathing in the frequencies, but you can apply this to your to your healing sessions. You can apply it to anywhere in your life, but and you can do it any time in your life. But so I'll just do this. I'll do a little bathing in the frequencies. It is like a meditation, but I want to point out that that um, this this use we'll use the frequencies to do this, and the frequencies will help the meditation. The meditation is not necessarily going to help the frequencies because they're sort of And a thing that exists there all the time and there's nothing you can do to make them better change them or do anything they're like nature and they're perfect in the way they are so they but they can help you with your meditation so just close your eyes for a minute and just relax you know get your back straight if you can or you can lie down if that's what you need to do and then you can just sort of bring your attention to your say your right hand And I like to I like to sort of just draw a little tiny circles in my right hand. It helps for some reason it helps me feel the frequencies more. If you're new to this, you may not feel anything, and that's fine. But just bring your attention there and receive in your hand. Just keep receiving. Receiving with no expectations. And just draw little tiny circles. Small and slow is the way to bring your mind and your body back into your into your attention, into your awareness. We're bringing our attention into the moment. And for me, actually, I like to keep my eyes open when I do this, but um, just for now, try and keep them closed so you can focus a bit more. And then bring your other hand up, both hands, and just notice what you're feeling in your other hand. Do the little tiny circles there and start to play a little bit. You can move your hands in and out. Just notice what you're feeling in your hands. Again, if you're feeling nothing, that's fine. Have no expectations. You may be buzzing, you feel, you may feel a little bubbling, you may feel hot, cold, you may feel moving air, anything is possible because we have no expectations. Just bring your attention to the moment, bring your awareness. And allow yourself to be aware of what's happening other places in your body. Where is your mind drawn? Where is your attention going? And be okay with anything that you sense or feel. If you're not sensing or feeling anything, that is okay too. Just your attention, your awareness, your presence in the moment is good enough. My mind just wandered off to the siren in the background I could hear, <laughs> and I'm gently bringing it back with love, with unconditional love, bringing your mind back into this process with total forgiveness. And again, just feeling those little circles in your hand, that little bit of magic, let it run through your body. And in the quiet and stillness of this moment, let your energy expand into the universe. And let it keep expanding infinitely, as far as you can go.
with no expectations, rest and relax in the hugeness of the universe. Now bring your presence back into the room you're in. And open your eyes and give your hands a bit of a shake and feel your feet on the ground. Now you can do that. I do that when I get up in the morning. I might read a bit of Solomon first or I'll do that. And it just gets me feeling the frequencies uh, to start the day. And with that awareness, I take it into the rest of my day. So I'm having a shower. I'll try and be, bring my awareness into it instead of just letting my mind ruminate like it likes to do in the shower. <laughs> and uh, just try and bring your presence, and it'll lift you up. And bring that attention, that presence into everything you do during the day. Driving your car, stop at an intersection, recall the frequencies. If you see somebody having a bad day, play with the frequencies a bit. You'd be amazed what might happen, with no expectation, of course. And you can do another meditation like that at night if you like, or read a little bit of Ab uh, Solomon before, do they say Abraham? I meant Solomon before you go to bed. It's really good. And, um, and then you just keep doing that all day long. It'll keep you, it's like, again, like exercise, and it'll, it'll bring the frequencies to mind more often for you. And pretty soon you'll, you'll have trouble slipping out of the frequencies. And uh, you'll find no reason to do that. And why would you want to? <laughs> there we go. How's that, Anna? Oh, Del, that was beautiful. That was so profound and beautiful and so simple. So simple. It, uh, it does, I, I saw a couple of comments, and yes, Maria Luisa, like Maria Luisa says, is that just paying attention to the reconnect your healing frequencies and everything stops. And by that she means there are no more disturbing thoughts. And it, it does, doesn't it? It kind of yeah, like yeah. puts a wedge between the, <laughs> the chatter in your head and suddenly it's like, boom, quiet. <laughs> I love how you said bring your thoughts back into loving, lovingly back into attention to the frequencies. I, yeah. You know what I'm enjoying here? Guys, we're taking a moment here to get a glimpse of the living in the frequencies program as well. Because uh, John and Cecilia and Annette are our teachers for the, uh, for the uh, winter session, which is still in progress. It's still seven uh, week seven, right? That's right, yeah. Till, we did, actually. Tell, tell us tell us a little bit about how this is coming along, living in the frequencies. It's amazing. You know, it's so amazing. When I first started Reconnective Healing, it was a bit of a lonely exercise because I had nobody around who was doing it. And it was, you know, I, I was, I couldn't let go of it, of course, but it was really sometimes, you know, it would be discouraging or you'd have some doubts, like you say. There was nobody around to talk with and uh, there wasn't really any you know, solid program to help sort of deal it, so to help me stay in the frequencies. But now we've got this living in the frequencies program. People usually take it after they've done the, uh, the, the, uh, the training of being the catalyst. And, um, and you know, it's, uh, they're really loving it because every week we meet for 10 weeks and we, we just dive deeper and deeper and deeper into, um, into how to stay in the frequencies, how to live in the frequencies and all the things that you might run into along the way. And um, we start off talking about being a catalyst, and then we help them learn some communication skills, how to talk to, to other people about reconnective healing. And then we get into uh, uh, communicating with people and then with your work. And then we start talk about abundance in your workplace and in your life. And then we spend the last couple of weeks dealing with knowing that you are a master and, and mastery of, of this work. And uh, the people seem to just love it. We love doing it. It's like, it's like a really inspiration being, being able to teach it. And the students are just blossoming. They, every week we give them a little homework assignment. You can just see them evolving and growing each week. It's, it's bloody amazing. <laughs> I have seen uh, uh, a few of tidbits. I have not been able to watch one of the replays entirely, but yeah. the passion, the passion and the fire of these people, these amazing students are undertaking the living in the frequencies is contagious. And yes. guys, who, you who are out there, I put the link to John's page. There's more information about living in the frequencies there. And I encourage you all, if you have been through the catalyst, 
get more information on this program because it really, really brings it home for us. Living yeah. in the frequencies is designed to make of that knowingness a practical day-to-day -day interaction with the frequencies. Just like John just shared with us, just simple meditations. There's so much more than these guys, these amazing teachers are sharing in Living the Frequencies. John, we're running a little bit out of time. I really would love for you to do uh, some sort of uh, um, encouragement or exhortation or any, any, any last uh, final uh, message that you want to share regarding fear, expectations, and activating our healing in everyday life. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's so simple. Just bring your attention to the moment. That's the simplest thing, and receive with no outcome. That's the same message that keeps coming through all of this. Bring your attention to the moment. Receive with no outcome, or, and uh, receive with no expectation of an outcome. Just have a sense of expectancy and joy, and that's what will come to you is love and joy. Uh, remember that we're, we're all flowers in the same field, and that reconnective healing allows us to reconnect to ourselves and then that gets projected out into the world where we're reconnected with everything else in the universe. And so we, we feel like we're all flowers in the same field. We're connected at our roots and we're connected on those, so many different levels and, and we can feel our connection. And just keep working with this because it brings you from a sense of multiplicity to a sense of unity with yourself. And, and that alone is, is worth anything in the world. Thank you very much. No, no, thank you. And to answer uh, Soren's question, yes, Soren, we are all these flowers in the field. Yes, we are one. We are one, ultimately. It's just the illusion of separation and perhaps it's needed. So that's how each of us gathers a different observation of the world. And with that different observation, just like each of our experiences of reconnective healing, we all grow and expand. And John, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm booking you for another program, okay? So I'll talk to you afterwards. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Love you, John. Bye for now. Okay, guys, you got to admit that was pretty awesome. That was a great meditation, a great guided interaction that you guys can do at home, too. Now, uh, why does the mind cannot stop their blah, 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 chatty, chatty, chatty? Well, you know what? Guys, that's what the mind is programmed to do. And it's, it's his job. It's his job. We call it the inner narrative. There's an inner narrative that is like, I don't know if you guys remember the DVD. You buy a DVD of a movie and then there's the director's narration in the background. That's what's going on all the time in our heads, whether we're paying attention or not. It becomes so obvious, though, when we go into reconnective healing, into the interaction, when we're in a session, and it just comes up. It's like this running comment. The first steps are to recognize that is happening, that there is this inner narration our mind is, can't stop, and then lovingly, lovingly, yes, let, let it go, but lovingly bring your attention back to what the frequencies are doing, how you, what are you observing, what are you noticing, what are you experiencing, and to stay in that observation, witnessing, noticing, experiencing, without trying to interpret your experience without trying to explain to yourself what you're observing, without trying to translate what is it that you are noticing. And that is part of our practicing with the new muscle. And it needs to happen on a daily basis, not at a specific plan moment. Reconnective healing is yours, it's with you, it is you 24-7 whether you're aware of it or not. But when we are aware of it, then activation of this healing is instant, it's constant. Then we become aware of it because by being aware of it, the healing is. The healing is. We just become aware of it. But it's there already, that transformation. Does that make sense? Do you need more explanation on that one? Because we can do a whole program about that. And I know, I know someone called Dr. Eric Pearl who would love to talk about that topic. Hmm, should we have any of this program? You guys let me know if we should invite Eric to do a Nourish Jam again. Just let me know, okay? Well, I'll tell you what, guys. We have one more video to show you, a quick promo, because we have an energy interaction with Eric and Jillian this Saturday, and that one is about our multidimensional self. Tangible exploration of this being we are everywhere. 
Let's start by opening our hands, feeling the frequencies in a small manner of movement, a refinement as if you're just finding, well, let's say that you've gotten over digital sound and you really want to re-experience the analog sound of the old vinyl record albums. And you found just how to get that needle into the groove. And you're playing. Finding that flow, finding that zone, finding that movement. It's almost as if for me, my left hand is that vinyl album and my right hand is the needle and as I glide my right hand back and forth, I can feel the movement. Aha! And a strange window came up, just to confuse you, just to keep you on your toes. So yes, no, and yes. We have this amazing, amazing program coming up this Saturday. And I really invite you to take part of it. It's at 10 a.m. our premiere. We are really enjoying the Saturday premieres because we get to play with the frequencies as Eric and Jillian are guiding us through them. We have an amazing chat going on. And then we have a great uh, Facebook uh, experience as well. This is part of our Reconnected Healing Family and Community Expansion. Join in! And you know what? Even if you watch it after the fact, leave us comments because these comments augment a, a conversation. And the more we augment and expand our conversation, oh boy, do these frequencies love it. And they just keep on expanding themselves. And I'm not going to leave you without three things to take away with you besides that beautiful meditation and that short little clip from the promo, uh, premiere this Saturday. How about we chat about three things you can take with you of activating healing in your daily life. These are the things sometimes we need a little bit reminding in our, in, in our interaction, in our relationship with its frequencies. First, recognize that you already are these frequencies. They're not separate from you. They feel that they could be out there. They feel that we need to call them. Well, actually, we're just receiving, and we are the receiver. Our entire body, our molecules become this antenna. So how you want to play with them, this knowledge them of them, this recognition that they're part of you is up to you. Baby steps, perhaps. Sometimes you maybe just are on fire and you feel it everywhere. And then there's a point in which perhaps you don't need to feel it anymore because you just know because it is. And again, this is a great topic. And as I said, Dr. Eric Pearl may love to talk about this. We'll have to uh, run it by him. The second one, there's no separation between you and the healing you need. The healing that you need is taking place 24-7. 24-7, the transformation, your ability to be multidimensional or appreciate uh, and recognize uh, multidimensionality is already there. There's no separation between that and you. Because as number three says, healing and transformation are already taking place. What happens is, is that while it's in place, perhaps it's our perception that is still trying to catch up. And that's okay, guys. That's okay. Sometimes we need time to process things. And then there's a time in which we can let go of that too. But again, there is no rush. There's only the speed at which each of us needs to go because after all, it's personalized. It's individual. It's a personal relationship with these frequencies and truly is as what each of us needs. And guys, it is the end of the show and I want to say hello to everybody in the chat again. Sally, Abdullah, Dino, who haven't I said hello to? Oh my goodness, you guys are, hello. All of you guys are amazing. Shamanism too, welcome. Alaruni, yay. Annette Diaz, welcome. We got Annette in the house as well. So guys, we'll be back next week. Shell, great to see you. And we're going to see you shortly. Another phone call about Costa Rica. A secret phone call. But next time, maybe everybody can participate. If you come to our amazing new retreats where I'm starting to program around the world. There'll be more about that. But guess what? It's going to be... 
right here on YouTube. It's not gonna be on Facebook. Sorry guys, so I'm telling you, you gotta subscribe, you gotta like, you gotta share, 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 share. And with that guys, it is, alas, the end of the show. And I want to thank again John for his amazingly beautiful meditation that he shared with us. Our thanks again to Lexi Alexander and Cecilia Sams for being so amazing with the chat room. And a special thanks to Monica and uh, Marcella, uh, Monica Novoa and Marcella Barbado for sharing with us this amazing little video that they put together on the uh, workshop with children in Colombia. And this is something, if you are passionate about working with children and you're passionate about um, allowing more people to experience reconnective healing in a presentation or workshop, please reach out to us. Put a comment here in our chat or send us an email because we want to do this with you. We want to help you do this. And what better way to start doing this than recommending and sharing this link to the first free hour, the first hour of the portal, completely gratis. Gratis. No commitment. It's our gift from us to you. All you need to do is allow yourself an hour with friends and family, your neighbors, your dogs and cats. The plants love it too. We have a lot of comments that come in about how the entire environment changes while they're watching this first hour. And if you guys have done the program, you know what I'm saying here. And you know what? You have done the program, cool. Then share this link with people who may not have done it. In this times, in the state of the world, is right now, what better moment? to have people be able to access this online and start start their own journey with the frequencies. Just start doing those two exercises with Eric. Just allow them to know that there is more and that fear, as we are fond of reminding ourselves, is false evidence appearing real. Until next week, with all my love, this is Anna Clavel with The Average Jam. <laughs>